Okay, Ajahn Kite, thank you. <coughs> you've talked about, um, you've emphasized the role of the ASCC, the sociocultural. Uh, the Director General also emphasized the sociocultural. It really means a, a kind of an identity that ASEAN doesn't quite have yet. I think that there is more Southeast Asian identity than ASEAN identity. I'm not sure, but you know, I, I, now there are Southeast Asian uh, subsections, you know, I go to these conferences and big major international meetings. Southeast Asia is becoming uh, an entity of its own, and the people from Southeast Asia tend to uh, recognize or relate to it uh, more than ASEAN, perhaps, I think. But we'll leave that for now. Uh, let me turn to uh, Dr. Alex Chandra. Uh, from the Habibi Center, he has a presentation. Uh, actually, uh, my presentation is going to be on the. Uh, I'm trying to go deeper uh, to what uh, Dr. Kitty already mentioned about a lot, a lot about like uh, ASEAN economic community. So I'm actually going to uh, go deeper uh, into the AEC 2025. But since there is no uh, uh, presentation, I think I'll just go ahead. Uh, so basically, what I'm going to say is uh, uh, three things, uh, uh, three, four things really. First is that I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll like to uh, walk you through through the, uh, the achievement of ASEAN economic integration so far. Secondly, uh, secondly, the uh, uh, the challenges, uh, key key challenges uh, in the deepening uh, in the deepening of ASEAN economic integration post 2015. And thirdly, what we need to do next, which is actually uh, the, the, the the key topic of our discussion today. Now, I think it has already been mentioned by Ambassador Jacket and also Dr. Kitty that uh, one of the key most visible, uh, most visible uh, uh, impact of uh, ASEAN economic integration has been the significant reduction of uh, tariff, and this has been quite uh, uh, visible uh, uh, so far. I think uh, as of uh, 2000, early 2015, the average tariff level of uh, uh, ASEAN is uh, 0 0.54, which is actually way much lower than the average of. Uh, uh, most favored nations uh, uh, tariff rates of uh, ASEAN member states, which stood at 6.9%. Uh, another thing that has been quite feasible in, uh, as a result of ASEAN economic integration has been trade expansion. And uh, uh, not only, in fact, not only, not only between ASEAN with the rest of the world, but also even in, uh, intra-trade. Uh, for example, uh, in 2000, 2007, our intra-trade only reached about uh, 352 uh, uh, b uh, million US dollar. Then uh, in 2014, it reached 608 uh, million uh, US dollar. Uh, so double double the size, although uh, double the size, although the share remains stable, uh, which is around 24, 25 uh, percent. Also, another thing is the invest in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, expansion of uh, investment, which is also illustrated in this uh, 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 diagram. More importantly, I think the, co the, the main contribution of ASEAN so far has been uh, the reduction of poverty rate. Uh, a lot of this has been uh, uh, made possible by the by 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 the fact that ASEAN has been able to maintain, uh, you know. Uh, uh, solidarity among themselves, uh, good cooperation, uh, and also basically they, they keep uh, good behavior among, among among themselves. This keep the re the region stable. So poverty rate has been has been has been has been going down from 45% uh, in early 90s to now around uh, around 14%. Uh, and also there is a, a quite significant uh, improvement in a number of uh, middle class, which is now uh, uh, 30 around around 37%. Uh, and by and large, I think ASEAN. I think we all agree that ASEAN has been quite uh, successful in, in in making itself the third largest uh, economy in East Asia, now seventh largest economy in the world. And uh, some ex observers are also uh, thinking about uh, putting ASEAN as, as a fourth uh, in in 2050. Now, what is more interesting also, what has been the 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 the, 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 the impact itself on the on the economic actors. I guess uh, AEC has always been made for you know uh, for for this uh, uh, for for the economic actors and how do the uh, responses uh, how the businesses has been responding to ASEAN? Uh, just give you a figure uh, the diagram here. Uh, so this was actually uh, based on the uh, the graph actually taken from the uh, study did done by the uh, Economics Intelligence Unit uh, in early 2015. You might have already seen this, but what is interesting interesting is this is that. Uh, 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 by and large, I think a lot of the companies, they basically they, 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 they uh, interview, like uh, they use uh, 177 comp uh, business leaders in the region uh, in, in their survey. Basically, what, 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 what they study uh, come, come up with, uh, five things. 
first is that ASEAN has been increasingly seen as an integrated, more as an integrated economic area. And secondly, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, companies are also increasingly uh, uh, have an ASEAN-oriented uh, strategy. And uh, uh, more importantly, uh, the centralization, uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the reduction of tariff harmonization of standard and conformance has also enabled these companies to centralize their manufacturing, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, production in ASEAN. And uh, a lot of these companies are also managing ASEAN as one. And uh, it's also reflected in the graph, uh, the two graph at the bottom, more and more customers and products in, throughout ASEAN are becoming more similar so this is quite, 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 quite interesting. So uh, in Jakarta, you see mall consists of uh, basically the same thing like they are in, in Bangkok, basically. <clears throat> now, post-2015 uh, challenges, ASEAN, as, uh, as, as uh, Dr. Kite already mentioned, ASEAN already come up with, uh, you know, ASEAN Vision 2025. And uh, a lot of this, uh, uh, a lot of the doc uh, document is quite thick. And actually, uh, coming up, uh, well, it's not really uh, nothing new. I think I think the idea of uh, ASEAN post 2015, uh, ASEAN 2025, uh, 2025 vision is simply to uh, uh, expand and deepen ASEAN economic integration rather than rather than uh, uh, putting putting up new uh, new 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 initiative. But nevertheless, I think uh, there are uh, at least uh, five five key challenges I see uh, in relation to AEC. First, again, uh, effective implementation already mentioned by uh, the, the previous two speakers, and secondly, I think. Uh, uh, expanding intra, intra, not extra trade and investment, key to us, and and, and I think a lot of the ASEAN projects uh, over the past years, over the last decade, has been trying to address this. But uh, I think uh, the uh, I think uh, it's like priority integration sector, which cover to have uh, you know sectoral integration um, uh, priority sectors. This is some, has somehow been 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 abandoned uh, one way or another, which so it has been relatively a failure. So uh, and then the third uh, the third item is the uh, protectionism. Fourth is uh, cross pillar coordination, and of course uh, and, uh, the last lastly, uh, but not this is the people center uh, AEC. On the effective implementation, uh, again uh, the AEC blueprint uh, ASEAN scorecard last year. Uh, they already identified, uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, we were unable to complete the 100% commitment that we had already uh, uh, made. Uh, uh, it was only like 90%. And again, le uh, let me just emphasize how, uh, you know, uh, PIS, Priority Integration Sector, was supposed to be a, a testing ground for ASEAN to integrate and expand intra-trade. Uh, this was actually has generally been been uh, been uh, relatively a failure, with the with the exception of uh, electronic industry and perhaps tourism. The others, uh, and also it's quite very difficult to find information uh, on uh, you know progress of uh, 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 progress of PIS initiative. Uh, I think only only last year, at the end of last year, when ASEAN Secretariat issued ASEAN Integration Report 2015 that they made a quite a thorough uh, assessment on, on the progress of, of PIS. But even there, I think in that report also uh, states very clearly how, how, how we are, we are uh, falling short in our, in our achievement in that, in that, in that, in that regard. Uh, in terms of the uh, effective implementation, I think um, uh, uh, what, what, what is important is institutional strengthening. A lot has been going on with regard to ASEAN Secretariat. But one, one point that I'd like to highlight here, I think, is also not only about when we talk about institutional strengthening, it's not only about uh, secretariat, but also uh, the, the capacity of the uh, governments, uh, 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 governments at the national level. On the intra-trade, now again, uh, I think this, uh, this needs to be uh, intra-trade investment, I think needs to be, uh, to be expanded. I, rem I remember uh, the former Secretary General of ASEAN once in 2006, he mentioned about uh, the projection that ASEAN Secretariat had in terms of improvement of uh, intra-ASEAN trade by 2020 by 30%. So we still have 5% left and we only have five, no, we have about, about five years left. And uh, I think I think it's going to be a challenge to do that because we haven't uh, we haven't we have actually since 2006 until now the level of intra-ASEAN trade has always been 25 uh, uh, 25 um, uh, percent, and also there is a quite significant gap between intra and 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 and, 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 and uh, extra uh, ASEAN trade. Now the the new ASEAN Vision 2025 identifies 
well, we have PIS 12 sector, you know, uh, agriculture, mono, uh, automotive, uh, and so on and so forth. But now the uh, ASEAN Vision 2025 also mentioned about sectoral integration approach, which basically identify new additional sectors. So this is going to be a challenge how ASEAN going to, uh, you know, focus on this, you know, focus on all these uh, sectors. And also bear in mind that the new ASEAN Vision 2025 does not even mention again what will happen with ASEAN Peace, uh, ASEAN PIS. So, so this needs to be to be checked with uh, with, with ASEAN. Whether are we abandoning uh, the, the old uh, PIS, or are we going to pursue, continue pursuing, uh, you know, uh, our commitment in uh, PIS? Uh, another item, uh, another item that needs uh, to to be highlighted here is protectionism. I think this has been this has become a, a major attention, uh, uh, especially given now that we are able to reduce uh, uh, significantly uh, tariff level. Uh, the, the key remaining uh, problem is the uh, uh, you know non-tariff measure, non-tariff barriers, and this is uh, information from the Global Trade Alert, which basically highlights uh, you know uh, who are the main offenders in ASEAN. Well, unfortunately, it's my country, but. Uh, but I will explain a bit later why, and also uh, Vietnam there. And also, a uh, study by, that done by the ASEAN Secretariat also uh, find that actually a lot of it, actually the major concentration of NTMs, NTBs in ASEAN is actually focused on uh, 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 TBT or trade barriers, uh, what is it, uh, technical barriers uh, to trade. Now, several points about protectionism. Now, I think, I think let's be clear. Uh, about the protectionism, NTMs, and NTBs. With regard to NTMs and NTBs, I think we have to be clear that um, although it is a major problem, NTMs and NTBs will always going to be existing. In fact, actually, uh, I think uh, a lot of the uh, external, uh, you know, uh, partners when we look at when they're looking at ASEAN, you know, uh, I mean, they're always pointing out how how uh, how ASEAN is, uh, integration will be uh, will be quite problematic with NTMs and NTBs and so on and so forth. But in fact, a study done by the uh, area uh, a couple of years ago also mentioned that actually, uh, in relation to other regions, the level of NTMs and NTBs in ASEAN are relatively quite. Quite modest. I'm not saying that you know we shouldn't be working on that, but I think we just also need to put everything into context. Now, I think uh, uh, I think you might also have heard that ASEAN uh, had uh, some uh, uh, just launched a couple of initiatives to address these issues. Uh, one being the ASEAN Trade Repository uh, System, which has been I think uh, supported by the EU, and then the ASEAN Solution for Investment Services and Trade. Uh, this this allows uh, private sector bodies to actually report any 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 problems related to uh, you know uh, when they want to access uh, Asia, other ASEAN market and so on and so forth. If they find a problem, they can they can report it online, and then uh, ASEAN members that have to uh, respond. It does not directly address NTM and NTBs, but hopefully from from this initiative they will be able to 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 to, to, to address the issue. And also there are also other other uh, stakeholders like such as private sectors and also uh, private sectors uh, and, and think tanks who are also helping ASEAN to do this uh, to to address this issue like area that they try to uh, uh, streamline uh, streamline all the information on the NTMs throughout ASEAN and so on and so forth and also the ASEAN Business Advisory Council. Uh, <clears throat> Now on the on the uh, cross pillar coordination, I think I think one key point here. I think again, I think uh, uh, this is I think uh, somehow uh, uh, a bit mentioned by the previous two speakers. Uh, I think uh, we have I think the uh, the compartmentalization has been has been helping ASEAN in the sense that it helps ASEAN focus on 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 what needs to be achieved and so on and so forth. But at the same time, it creates a lot of problem. Uh, for example, I think there has been a quite. Uh, 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 quite uh, uh, my, uh, debate about how economic integration have been have been able to uh, contribute to uh, human development, uh, environmental issues, and so on and so forth. In fact, uh, you may you may recall that uh, you know the forest fires in Indonesia last year caused a big uproar. Uh, and, uh, and all this actually, uh, 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 you know, I think partly is also a result of, uh, you know, uh, more economic openness uh, throughout ASEAN countries, main investment, but less uh, uh, less good governance in the area of uh, sustainability uh, and then of course uh, last but not least is the people center uh, uh, ASEAN uh, again uh, I think I think this this uh, I think let's just be clear here I think among the three pillars of ASEAN I believe I think the AEC despite despite the hype and uh, attention given to AEC I think the AEC has been the most difficult pillar has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to be to be penetrated by civil society organization. 
uh, I think uh, even I think uh, ASEAN has always been uh, more uh, uh, comfortable in uh, consulting itself with uh, their traditional ally, which is the business community. Uh, not not even even among the business community, they, uh, you know, I, I think it's only like the ASEAN Business Advisory Council. Uh, so, but I think I think uh, the way the way the way the ASEAN ASEAN, ASEAN needs to uh, uh, to materialize this people center people oriented AEC uh, it has to be revisited uh, one by uh, uh, deepening broadening and uh, uh, structuring better the way uh, the engagement uh, to take place uh, okay uh, i think it's not question about interface i mean business uh, i know I, I used to work with the asean business advisory council you know uh, my former boss uh, the, the, the only thing they they're concerned about is meeting with the asean leaders and so on and so forth i think it's not a question about uh, meeting asean leaders but i think actually the ability to uh, to, to to provide technical uh, you know to to give a tech, more technical inputs uh, actually uh, more at the senior official level i think which is which is more important uh, the engagement uh, and then also uh, another thing, I think, I think a key challenge in, in promoting people center EEC is that how to change the mindset of the policymakers. Again, I think uh, uh, traditionally uh, when we talk about the economic integration, the first thing you ca it comes in our mind is always uh, private sector. But then, you know, we know that economic integration also impacts consumers you know, civil society groups, uh, grassroots uh, people and so on and so forth. So this, this again, need, this, this needs to be uh, uh, revisited. So what next? Let me just emphasize my uh, the, the points that I've been making the last uh, 20 minutes, perhaps. Again, I think uh, I would I would argue the importance for uh, uh, intra 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 ASEAN economic cooperation. We I think we tend to abandon it. Uh, I think there are, there has been a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, you know ASEAN. Of course, it's good to ASEAN to keep uh, our region open and so on and so forth. But I think. Uh, uh, many of the initiatives that we have been pursuing has been at the expense of, expense of ASEAN uh, own economic uh, in integration. Uh, let alone, uh, you know, TPP or whatever, you know, RCEP is still important because ASEAN centrality. But I think what is more important is ASEAN own integration, how we can create that complement economic complementarity. And, and it's, not, uh, it's, not, it's not all bad news. A lot of economists actually say, keep, keep saying that, you know, uh, we are uh, uh, competitive in uh, economically competitive in nature, and but I think I think there are some elements of priority uh, our previous priority integration sectors that you know that can be showcased as a good case study that where we can actually build on. So uh, so that's 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 uh, that's the item number one. And then again, the the second item would be the what next would be the uh, sectoral uh, sectoral integration. Uh, again, um, I think. As, as I think uh, the previous two speaker uh, have been have been have been point, uh, also pointed out, uh, we have so many initiatives, you know, but we, we tend to forget on, on what we want to focus on, what we want to implement. I think one of the best uh, 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 and what ASEAN should be focusing is really back to the PIS, or now that ASEAN already identified new sectoral integration approach, now which by the way they also add another ten sector, uh, you know, uh, priority sectors, with some of them overlaps with the old uh, PIS. I think we should just foc uh, focus on that instead of uh, making a lot more commitment. If we focus on this, we can actually test out how effective our commitment can be and then uh, uh, how we can try to address protectionism and NTBs, NTMs, uh, you know, in this, uh, in this in the sectors and how we can improve, uh, improve cross pillar coordination between these uh, this, this, this 20 sectors and uh, APSC and uh, also ASCC. And uh, how people, say, how consultation and engagement with uh, with the public, people, and stakeholders can be done in these twenty sectors, for example. Yeah, and then last but not uh, and lastly, of course, this the, the uh, effective uh, monitoring system that is acceptable to all. Uh, before you may have recall, ASEAN have this uh, scorecard system, which draws a lot, which drew a lot of criticism. Uh, basically, because a lot of the information, the scorecard is based, the assessment is based on the information given by the uh, member states. And last year, at the end of last year, ASEAN, I already mentioned this, uh, ASEAN published this uh, ASEAN Integration Report 2015 by the uh, ASEAN Integration Monitoring Office. Uh, I think this is what you will see in the years to come, uh, 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 will be the model of the, which actually basically try, uh, the, the document tried to analyze in great, great, uh, you know, uh, great depth uh, uh, 
how integration has been achieved and so on and so forth. Even I think the, the document also uh, uh, mentions a lot about the uh, our priority, uh, the progress of priority in the integration sector. I think uh, I'll speak too much already. I'll just leave it uh, there. Thank you. Uh, there are also were a lot of acronyms. You see, if you want to study ASEAN, you have to know the acronyms. Uh, the, of course, the AIR, I've just been reminded, is the Integration Report. And there was also the ASEAN CCI, which I haven't seen for a long time. That's the, the ASEAN Acronyms 1.0, uh, which I think is the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, right? Uh, so you won't be tested, but if you know all the ASEAN acronyms, you can also kind of tell what they're trying to do. Uh, let me move on to uh, Kun Kawi. I know that uh, we, we are eagerly awaiting his remarks. Uh, he has worked on ASEAN uh, pretty much throughout his professional career. He's been with the ASEAN Secretary General uh, in the 1990s. He's, he's an ASEAN analyst through and through. Uh, before that, I wanted to just say a couple of things uh, perhaps that he can react to or include in his remarks. First, the, the extent of integration in ASEAN that we see. There is some integration. It's really largely geography, geography, and market-driven. So you see in, in, uh, around here, if you go to a hospital in Bangkok, a, any leading hospital, you'll see a lot of uh, Myanmar nationals, well-to-do Myanmar nationals, Cambodians, a lot of Myanmar nationals, Myanmar uh, migrant laborers working in Thailand and uh, Cambodians and so on. So it's really market-driven and due to the porous borders that they can crisscross the land. Uh, so we see some integration in that sense. Um, at the same time, uh, I would also say that uh, the kind of the kind of integration around here. I think we may be looking. Yeah, you know, we compare a lot to Europe. My analogy would be that in Europe, they have a kind of a committed embrace. They embrace integration, embracing in an absorptive process, right? absorptive process, like a mutual multinational sponge, then they absorb each other and it becomes kind of the European Union eventually. The ultimate integration is the United States of America. For ASEAN, it's like a hug. They don't embrace, they hug. Uh, kind of a flexible, selective hug. And uh, therefore, ASEAN is more kind of, uh, uh, you know, connecting the dots, connecting the dots. But the connectedness over time uh, can lead to a kind of a fragmented, disparate integration. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Let us hear from uh, Kun Kawi. Uh, having listened to all this, I try to articulate all the views in six PowerPoints. People talk about uh, arrival of ASEAN community 33 days after what happened before 17,300 uh, days. We have uh, 49 years history. ASEANs, uh, I would say this, ASEAN is like a gum, very chewy and very sticky. Be careful the way you chew and don't stick it under your table because it can harm you. This is what ASEAN is all about. I try to articulate why you know you talk about uh, ASEAN at all. Half filled bottle, half empty. At the moment at the uh, AC, America was the first to court ASEAN because America see ASEAN as not too strong and not too weak. It's a very good time to come in. So half empty. We see each other as half full, but that does not matter. Perception with outsider. This year will be extraordinary years to mark the arrival of of ASEAN community, no matter what you're talking about in ASEAN exceptionalism count. Why United States invite ASEAN leaders to go to Sunnyland? And of course, a lot of them have to pay their own ways. Then in May, you have the Russian. Putin this time wrote a personal letter to invite ASEAN leader to meet in Sochi because Russia has met the boat for a long time. And then China this time try to highlight the uniqueness of uh, ASEAN-China uh, relations to commemorate 25th anniversary. That is why uh, people like to back ASEAN and ASEAN centralities. And when you talk about centralities of ASEAN, uh, 
you have to be proud because for the first time, all dialogue partner now committed to have ASEAN taking the lead. Of course, there are various degree. United States was the last one. United States was the last one to support ASEAN centrality last year. That is why it was a court, the strategic partnership. Otherwise, America will be left behind, even though America was dialogue partner since 1977. But ASEAN has not felt that United States has done enough. This is very strange. But it was a court, the strategic uh, partnership last year, November. That was the last one, uh, the number seven. This is very important. So United States is trying to add value with the Sunnyland. With the Sunnyland meeting is very important. And I think you will see a new momentum of uh, ASEAN, US relation amid all this superpower uh, competition. So ASEAN has no enemy. Who want enemy like ASEAN? They cannot agree among themselves, you know. So we, we are very good with all powers, big or small. But uh, the most important also, we are non-hegemonic. That's why make ASEAN attractive. And so, I mean, this has been said about, you can argue, you know, ASEAN uh, take a long time, talk chop, no consensus and all that. But what make ASEAN attractive is that we are non-hegemonic non grouping and with a very benign attitude. And sometimes we punch uh, above our weight which not very often. Dr. As Alexander go into detail, AEC and uh, uh, Director General talking about the, gen uh, uh, the dynamic of ASEAN community. And I think uh, at the moment, arrival of ASEAN community, imperfect as it is, it has two main purposes. We, ASEAN wants to be a bridge builder uh, as you know, you have all these uh, dialogue partner. ASEAN does, of course, give uh, full attention to dialogue partner, but uh, of the most important are the U.S. and China. So this year, you will see ASEAN uh, under the chairmanship of Laos, uh, trying to maneuver, balancing the, these two superpower. And I still don't know whether the Russia can make its present felt or not, because Russia has the uh, the past four or five years to make its present fail, but it failed repeatedly. I think there's some uh, uh, perceptions uh, in Moscow about uh, how it's, uh, powerful and how uh, effective is ASEAN. So the first year is very clear. This year, ASEANs are coming to become a community will have a very big bargaining power. The second tier is, of course, you have all this uh, EU, India, Japan, and South Korea, which also are very important. But ASEAN is go beyond its usual uh, uh, territories. We, we want to widen. Now, the phrase Indo-Pacific has been used, introduced by Indonesia, but there's still no consensus among ASEAN. But then again, we also looked through brothers, uh, archipelagos. Um, the second uh, important role of ASEAN uh, community is the open regionalism. As you can see, all these ASEAN-led uh, activities, whether it treaties or enmities or cooperation, which now is over, you know, since 1976, we have 33 signatories. And now it's becoming a problem because we have uh, non-ASEAN uh, states being accede to the treaty, which can cause trouble because ASEAN has no controls anymore. And then you have ASEAN Regional Forum, which is open regionalism. Now it's a more non-ASEAN country. Uh, as you know, uh, when it started in 1994 in Singapore, the original name of ASEAN Regional Forum is Asian Regional Forum. And I think in the future, probably uh, Asian will be used because uh, in our local press, English press, they always, you know, uh, misspell. Sometimes we write ASEAN, the sub will change into ASEAN. Sometimes we write ASEAN, they will change into uh, Asian. So this kind of ASIAN and ASEAN is interchangeable from now on because ASEAN is looking beyond ASEAN into big Asian communities. 
Now, this is one of the things that us will define us in, in the next 10 years is contained in various documents, particularly the ASEAN vision uh, forging ahead. Because we are now at the time that ASEAN know its weaknesses and its strengths. It's trying to develop the so-called shared norms and value into common norms and value. This is a big question. You know, you talk about, uh, our the panelists talk about people-oriented, people-centered. Do you know what the difference between oriented and people-centered? You have to use it uh, at the same time. You cannot just use one because Laos will get angry. And Laos as chairman this year will highlight people-oriented. People-oriented simple mean government-initiated in policy that affect the people. And people-centered means, well, it depends on whether you're Indonesia or in Thailand or in the Philippines. In Thailand, people-centered means large uh, person, means one, all this demonstration, you know, all this people-centered activity means, you know, people initiated, people come together and urge the government to start off uh, policy. That's what's uh, the difference. So they have to use this together. People oriented, people centered. Earlier last year, Malaysia came out, you know, uh, we want to move forward, people center, strong objection from other ASEAN countries. So you have to use together. Second point, as the biggest challenge for ASEAN is to move, to overcome this. You know, whether there are cases when uh, non interference of internal affairs must be interpreted liberally. And I think this is important. Indonesia has done that, you know, by inviting uh, ASEANs to engage in Aceh, to engage in uh, also in East Timor. And Indonesia also, I'm talking about Indonesia of the past, you know, under Yutiono, not about Jokowi, because there was some uh, uh, recalcitrance. Indonesia has done a very good job. It presents uh, its uh, human rights record for distributions among ASEAN members because under ASEAN AISHA rules, there's no need to uh, distribute the uh, human rights record because ASEAN, as a member of UN, bounds to present the so-called UPI, uh, Universal Periodic Review. But under ASEAN, we don't have that uh, requirement. So. Indonesia has done so voluntarily, and I hope that this new sort of feeling, the sense of community, will emerge and take range in the overall ASEAN activity. So if you have action that need voluntary action, you can do it much better. Thailand has invited Indonesia to be some of uh, uh, facilitators in the uh, Thai-Cambodian uh, disputes at uh, uh, Pravi here in Kao uh, temple. So this is uh, the movement, and I think it will take hold if Thailand, Thailand actually tried to follow, the, and also the Philippines tried to follow this voluntary action so that it become norms. And if you become norms, the so-called, you know, you look at the overall purpose, then you can uh, jump the, over the uh, non-interference principle. Number three, ASEAN has to come to decision faster, speedier, because there are emergency, big power shift going on in the regions. You cannot have United States dictate at all. You cannot have China. ASEAN has to come and occupy the central role. So we need to make speedier decision. That, I think, uh, have to depend on ASEAN. And I think this will occupy the agenda of ASEAN now that the United States have courting ASEAN, China and Russia. So I think engaging uh, major power needs a speedier decision on key issue because uh, in EAS, East Asian Summit, it used to be ASEAN defined the agenda, set up the topic. Now, normal, you have to give the sense of uh, uh, belonging, give all the stakeholder some chair in setting up the agenda. That is why I think this is what ASEAN need to do, big challenge in 20, within the next 10 years. And in one of the recommendations, uh, if you read uh, on the ASEAN's uh, vision 2025, is the revival of Troika. Troika has been used, but not officially, during the Cambodian crisis in 1997, uh, uh, when Cambodia faced uh, uh, political turmoil. So I think, this uh, revival of Troika, this is a Thai idea, 
anyway, uh, Thai idea has been proposing because of his experience in Cambodia. Hopefully, with uh, this uh, trika system, uh, decision making or uh, would be much better. And of course, lastly, is the uh, ASEAN uh, uh, centrality. ASEAN centrality has been now embedded on the uh, ASEAN uh, Vision 2025. Again, you have to give credits to Thailand because Thailand was the one who write the papers, try to promote ASEAN, not within uh, only itself, but outside on key issue and also in relations to international organization. But this is a big question because ASEAN's uh, centrality oftentimes confused with uh, ASEAN's unity. ASEAN unity can be really weak sometimes, but uh, not the over ASEAN centrality. Here's the uh, difference. I think um, ASEANs sometimes can be uh, a little bit uh, different on issue, but overall general trust, they are all the same. And I think this is important. And uh, one of the um, most important thing here is everybody has to do their bit. Uh, Dr. Chandra talked about you know, the problems I encounter uh, Ajahn Kitty also why the Im implementation. You have to take all the stakeholders to come together. You know, the state at the moment, a lot of questions being asked to the government saying that, you know, what benefit to the people of ASEAN because they wanted to know what is the tangible. And I think we must have a much uh, better communication plan. Private sector, private sector, I think, is still very reluctant, especially on the PPP, the so-called public-private partnership uh, on the infrastructure. This is why there has not been progress. Over 700 plus uh, connectivities projects, you know, nobody picked it up. Now everybody is looking to one belt, one road offered by China. You know, we should look into ourselves because as in connectivity come first, we have actually come ahead five years, and I think China got the inspiration uh, from ASEAN connectivity. They just add more and put uh, maritime Silk Road along the way. And the public, and I think when you talk about the, uh, uh, the third pillar, the social cultural, the people's matter, but somehow the ASEAN public still ignorant, still have not yet paid much attention to ASEAN. You know, the young populations, almost 60% of ASEAN uh, uh, citizens are young people. Young people need to be educated. And I think this way you have to give credits to Thailand and also non-governmental uh, organization, private uh, sector have come out with many group organizations that try to promote uh, uh, knowledge to the youth. And one thing is about uh, another member, Brunei, Brunei being a new member and have a smallest population. The leader of Brunei has been promoting youth participation all the time. Uh, if you read the history of speech of a Brunei leader, they always mention youth as the permanent theme in the uh, ASEAN contribution. Civil society organization, this is problematic because ASEAN still has uh, to be more open from the input from the uh, so-called bottom-up, you know. 2005, that's the start when Malaysia come out with the idea saying that we want to see more input from ground level. It was a great idea. I attend the, the first meeting 30 minutes because leader did not know what to expect, NGO did not know what to expect, so the 35 minutes encounter was great and excellent. That was why it uh, continued but uh, facing bumpy roads because uh, uh, when the NGO uh, met with the leaders, they're trying to criticize the leader for not doing enough, so really upset many ASEAN leaders. So now it's an open question. This year, under the Laos uh, chairmanship, there would be no uh, NGO meeting, the so-called interface with uh, uh, as a leader, and I think East Timor, being so enthusiastic, want to show, want to be part of ASEAN, would like to organize it instead, and which is 
uh, rather on. And I think ASEAN need a new sort of mindset in dealing with uh, NGO, CSO, and CSO also has to adopt a mindset that you have to sit down and work together on a deliverable, on a doable uh, proposition, not something out of this world. I remember the year 2010, NGO ASEAN base has no knowledge about ASEAN at all. I can say this. Now, over 10 years, the ASEAN based CSO are more capable. They know the issue, they have read or ASEAN document, they can speak, the ASEAN speak. But yet, there's too idealistic. ASEAN need somebody that provide the idea that's deliverable. And I think this is very important. Otherwise, it will be difficult for the bottom up and top down decision to meet halfway. And that is very sad. And how can an ASEAN community become uh, people oriented? And finally, this is also very important. Academic uh, have important role to play, particularly in member countries. I think there's only a few countries that come out, you know, scholar come out with uh, a studies of uh, ASEAN integrations, how ASEAN can be better run, how to improve ASEAN secretariats. I think I need to mention uh, uh, Singapore, uh, to a certain degree, Indonesia, Malaysia and, and Thailand, and the rising star of ASEAN uh, is Vietnam. Vietnam has in the past produced more than uh, two or three dozen of ASEAN experts, even though some of them focus on political uh, security. They have some of the uh, work related to ASEAN more than the old ASEAN member also in the past uh, one year. And my conclusion is this, you can criticize ASEAN for whatever it is, for our weaknesses. As I said, uh, ASEAN is like a gum, you know, it's very chewy. It takes no form, sometimes it can be very bad. But one thing is certain, we will stay here, facilitate enhanced regional cooperations, because the world now is very fluid and very divided. Global environment, you look at the US, Look at China, look at uh, Japan, look at the rest of uh, Middle East. So you need ASEAN, and it's fine with me. You can criticize ASEAN, blah, 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 for lack of actions, you know, lacks of cut. But ASEAN will be here to stay, and uh, it is important. And as I said, again, ASEAN is uh, not so strong and not so weak. That is why uh, it's very attractive. Finally, we have uh, ASEAN community, so you have to say thank you in 10 languages, man. Cheers to Tin Bades, you know, Slamat Po, Kop Chai Lai, Kop Kun Ma, Kun Jaran Tarumakasi. Come on, Kop Kun Ma, Kap, thank you.